I'm Jim Scudder. Today on In Grace, we're in Nueva, Egypt. Welcome back to Exodus Found. What an awesome experience it has been to retrace the Exodus journey. Last time, my brother-in-law Neil and I arrived in Cairo and visited the pyramids and the Sphinx in Giza, being reminded of Egypt's rich history and amazing building abilities. But we wanted to investigate Israel's part in Egypt's history, so we went to the renowned Egyptian museum to check out the Maranepha steel, a great stone slab that provides evidence of Israel in Egyptian history. We also examined an ancient Egyptian chariot so that Neil and I would know what to look for in our upcoming Red Sea exploration dives that we're going to do today. Then we drove toward the eastern Nile River Delta where Goshen would have been. And at this starting point of the Exodus, much intriguing evidence has been found of Joseph and his family living and prospering there. We also visited the shallow lakes near the Suez Canal that some have proposed would have been the site of the Red Sea crossing. Neil and I decided that those were definitely not the correct location because the Bible speaks of a deep, large body of water. So we begin to drive toward the best candidate that we can think of, the Gulf of Aqaba. Today, we arrive at Nueva, a likely beachhead where Israel was trapped on all sides. We wanted to see and explore this interesting place for ourselves and take you underwater in search for evidence of Pharaoh's army. We've made it here to Nueva Neil in Egypt, this kind of peninsula of land, mm. a beachhead really. I've been imagining what it would look like just for months anticipating this trip. And it really, it's built up more than I expected because there's structures here and a hotel. But I'm just amazed. This is exactly where the children of Israel were when God told Moses, tell the children of Israel to fear not and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Yeah, now we're not saying this is for sure the place, but it does make sense, right? It does seem to fit, you know, it's not really logical that it's these shallow lakes. Yeah that they crossed. It doesn't seem like the Gulf of Suez fits the criteria of them being trapped in in a great deep, right. what is that, around 100 feet or so deep in the Gulf of Suez? Yeah, maybe 100, maybe 200, Yeah, but much. this is, what, behind us is the Red Sea, which is like a half mile deep at the crossing point, yeah. but there are these deep trenches where it's a mile deep, mm. and that's only a you know a 10 mile wide body of water. Yeah, That's the great deep, and when the Bible speaks of the depths uh, great depths, you know, six or seven verses in the Old Testament that speak of this being a deep body of water. This fits, so I think it has to be the Gulf of Aqaba, mm. okay? But then where's the crossing point? It seems like it can't be up at the tip because, you know, you could just kind of go around. I don't think it's all the way at the other end mm. because it just seems a little too far and you don't have some of the features that you have here. Here at Nueva, what do you have? You've got this huge plateau plenty of room for the entire nation of Israel to be. They came through this gorge, that's the only way in and the only way out in antiquity, yeah. because on both sides you have the mountains coming into the water. Mm. They're on this beach trap because you have the Egyptian army coming in, mm. the Wadi Wadir behind them, Yeah, and here they are. Now, you also have this plateau where it's not as deep as on both sides of the Gulf of Aqaba. I don't know, just everything about this place seems right. It's wonderful to get to be in one of the most beautiful places in the world to dive yeah. and to look for something so important as that piece of history. Yeah. The Bible actually gives us some geographic names like Migdal, which means tower, Pihati Rot, which means the mouth of the gorge, Belsophon, which means Lord of the North, Obviously, the sea, we know where that is. Pihahi wrote, we think, is the place where Wadi Watir opens. Watir means water, by the way. And there was a lot of water that would come out of there in the rainy season. So there are some things we still don't know. Uh, maybe there was a tower in antiquity, an Egyptian tower. And that would make sense because 
You want to guard maybe what it was here and put a tower up. It would be a great place for a tower, right there at the mouth of the Wadi Watir, kind of the gorge on each side, maybe a tower on top, logical place. Doesn't it seem unusual though that there are so many references to a place? Like God wanted us to do some research later on and to figure all this out to show the world what actually happened and what's here. Sure, he gave us four points of reference and it's really neat to be here just kind of in pursuit of the truth. All right, Neil, so off in the distance, you can see the gorge, Piha Hiroth, possibly, the opening of the mouth, the gorge. And you can see that the Wadi Watir, was what that's called, the water would flow whenever there's a heavy rain all the way to this spot that we're standing. You can kind of see this is the dry riverbed. And then they would have been spit out basically onto this beach. Now. What their fear was, was that Egypt would come after them. And sure enough, Pharaoh changed his mind. They mounted up on the chariots, they flew down, and they came, they followed them right into that gorge. But then God stopped Egypt, the pillar. Can you just imagine for a moment, wow. the pillar of cloud, the pillar of fire that would have held them there mm. while God was saving Israel here. Wow. Hundreds of thousands of people here on this beachhead. They need to get over to Midian, cross the Gulf of Aqaba, and God parts the Red Sea. It's an amazing thing if this was the spot that we're standing here so close to it. God turned them yeah. on the route. Yeah, It was unexpected. I think Moses thought he would continue on the normal road to Midian, mm -hmm. which would have been to the north all the way to a lot and then down. Yeah, But here they found themselves basically stuck on this beach. So let's walk over and show everyone the other side of this bridge. And you can see again, the wadi opening out into the Gulf of Aqaba. I'm struck in the passages I reread Exodus chapter 14, that God said, I will get honor upon Pharaoh and upon his host. And the detours that God allows in our life, sometimes we don't see that big picture, but God sees the big picture and he knows that him getting honor is the purpose for what he allows us to go through. It's granite, it's a column, a pillar. It was found in the surf here in Nueva. Mm. And you can see here where it had been eroded, actually a big piece of it on this side is eroded away. Yeah. Now, this was a Ron White discovery. We're really skeptical on some of the things that he found and said, because some of the things just seem impossible, outlandish. But this is a real artifact. Right. And you don't find anything like this anywhere around here. And it's just one. Mm. Now, Ron said that he found another one on the other side, on the Saudi Arabia side. And that one was turned over to the authorities and it disappeared. And he said that one had uh, ancient Hebrew writing on it. And the Hebrew on the other one it supposedly had Solomon on it. Mm. And some of the things about the Red Sea crossing. You know, this one, I don't see any writing other than the graffiti, obviously but it could have been on this side as well, which is eroded away. Again, it doesn't give us any conclusive proof, but I mean, what else would it be? Why would it be here? Very curious. Enough with the dry land. Now it's time to jump into the Red Sea and explore the depths. So what are you feeling about to go on your first Red Sea day? I am so excited. That's what the children of Israel saw and they didn't have scuba gear to get over there or a boat or wood to build a boat. And so the thought of maybe finding something underwater, I'm really excited. It's awesome to get back underwater and to be able to share with all of our InGrace friends the incredible world that God has created that we rarely get to see. Now we're looking for artifacts, but I'm also going to be looking at corals and fish and the beauty of God's creation. And as we begin our dive, the first thing we see is seagrass and a really cool puffer fish. We're looking for anything that might resemble a chariot wheel, an artifact, a sword, anything, even coral crusted uh, shapes that would be resembling chariot wheel. And right away, we find this stick or this pole, not sure what it is, but it certainly doesn't look like it's been down there for thousands of years. Oh, and this is an amazing lionfish. 
one of the most unusual looking fish in the world. Oh, uh, here's something. It looks like an ancient paint bucket from the Egyptian dynasty. Some of these coral formations seem like they could have been something previously, but it's so hard to tell. They look just kind of like any other coral formation. So we just weren't certain if this was anything more than just uh, something you would normally find underwater in any body of salt water. Again, so much life, so much variety, the colors, beauty. The beauty down here is incredible. These, what they call Red Sea goldfish are everywhere. The actual name is the Jewel Fairy Baslet. Look at this, it's a frogfish. It looks like an otherworldly alien creature blending right in with the corals. These Xenia corals are beautiful as it looks like they're reaching out and grabbing the water. We'll see more of those later. And then the eels are incredible. Oh, check out these soul. They actually call these Moses soul because they say Moses split the Red Sea and it split these fish right in half. Now this was a neat fish. This is a thornback cowfish and these three spot desailies protecting their coral home. Oh, we saw a lot, but I don't think we found exactly what we're looking for. So that was our first dive at Nueva. And I think the dive itself was spectacular, right? Yeah, for because me. the water is perfectly clear and the life is vibrant, mm. colorful, really unique creatures too that we didn't see in Florida yeah. when we did our training. Right. The white eel, of about three feet long, was spectacular. Yeah. And there were a bunch of little bright orange fish right by some big clumps of coral. Fantastic. Yeah. It was a good introductory dive. Also, the potential of what might have happened here too is pretty cool. It, it's very cool. This series, Exodus Found, has shown me how powerful our God is. Let me send you this map and chart for free. This will give you all the locations that we filmed in Egypt and Saudi Arabia, and a lot of the facts as to why I believe this is the route of the Exodus. If you send in grace a gift of $35 or more, I'll also send you the full video series. If your gift is $250 or more, let me also send you this beautiful limited edition canvas print of the Red Sea Party. Join In Grace's matching gift challenge. All gifts given this week will be doubled. Call now, 800-78-GRACE or visit ingrace.tv. All right, so let's talk about the depth of the Red Sea. 22, 2300 feet deep, it's hard for us to comprehend. Wow. In Dubai, they have the world's tallest building. This tower is about the same height as the depth of that crossing point. Wow. And when you stand there and you look at this mm -hmm. building, you feel like an ant, mm -hmm. and you think, could you imagine the walls of water being as tall? And it's not just a spire sticking out, it's this massive wall that On both could sides. destroy you so quickly. The next day, we decided we wanted to go out in a boat and jump into the water that's more in the center of Nueva, the most probable place of the center of the crossing point. This is really fun, isn't it? This is fantastic. Yeah, it's a treat to be out on the Red Sea, the Gulf of Aqaba. Yeah. In a fairly small fishing boat. Yeah. Israel gets through and Egypt decides to follow them. Yeah. The last person gets out, God allows Egypt to enter. They all get in. This is a 10 mile stretch. They're all now in in their chariots and even probably Pharaoh himself, I think. They're all inside and then their wheels start popping off. Yeah. And their, their chariots are dragging and all of a sudden the walls of water just come crashing down on them to destroy the most powerful army on the earth, showing the power of the one true God. 
if this was the spot, which it seems like it is, there's a, a certain reverence, I think, that we should be experiencing right now. After viewing all of this from a boat, I really wanted to get in, get wet, and look around here, more in the center of Nueva. And as we swam around, I continued to look for anything that looked abnormal. Unfortunately, we just found coral and fish. And then when we got out of the water, our boat captain was fishing for squid. And then he gave my sister a try. Well, I want to try more of this. Is wow. amazing. <laughs> The dive center is not really wanting to take us into the area that we wanted to go. There's a lot of permissions and stuff that they need to get here. We're negotiating so I can go a little deeper. I feel like the farther out you go, the better chance you would have of finding something that somebody else hasn't already found. So hopefully they'll be able to take me deeper because I have the advanced open water and still the others in our party uh, can still go diving. I got approval to go with my own guide and dive down over 100 feet. Neil will have to stay in shallower water with another group. Also this time, I'm bringing a metal detector, hoping to stumble on a sword, a spearhead, or a chariot wheel. This dive is gonna be so incredible because we start by diving under this pier and it was full of cowfish, lionfish, and just beautiful corals and beautiful creatures all encrusted on these poles. Then we swam through the beautiful school of minnows. Although the marine life is incredible, we're not looking for marine life. We're looking for anything that could be left from the Egyptian army. Boy, we can hardly take our eyes off the fish, the shells, the corals, and those cute little clownfish. We kept seeing incredible, beautiful things. Again, this Xenia coral that's almost grabbing at the waves and at the water. Not really getting any hits with anything that I felt could be something of ancient Egyptian origin. Neil did come across this one, looked like maybe a hub, but I think it was just an old water pipe. I don't really think that was anything, although it is interesting. Now this round coral was intriguing, but I saw it all over the place. I think it's just a round coral. Another paint bucket, more fish under and around and in all throughout the coral. So much life, so much variety, colors, oranges, purples, greens. Continue to look, continue to search, hoping to find something, uh, starting to run out of air. But you know, we wanna stay down as long as we possibly can because this is so incredible breathtaking and so exciting because of what there could be down under the sea. What an amazing, amazing place to go under the water and to see all that God has done, all that God has made, all of colors, but it's time to go up, time to do a safety stop, and eventually our time diving here in Egypt has to come to an end. I was with a different guide. You stayed shallower. I went down to about 102 or three feet. And uh, how was your dive? It was great. And I saw a couple things that looks possibly structural. I'm not going to claim it was anything. One did kind of resemble maybe a hub of a chariot, but I, I can't say for sure that's what and it was. And you have video of that? I do have okay. video. I still feel like the crossing point, if it was on Nueva, would be further north from here. We okay. can't dive there but uh, still pretty cool, saw yeah. amazing creatures. Yeah. And to me, it's worth coming just to see the creation under the water. So either way, it's a win-win, I think. For sure. Good job. Good job. Although we didn't make any major discoveries today, we still believe that we're in the right spot. Perhaps in the future, there might be an ingrace, high-tech, deep marine exploration that will find some real evidence of Pharaoh's army. Next week on In Grace, we're gonna take a break from the Exodus Found series and talk about Thanksgiving and sowing and reaping. And then the week after that, we're coming back to the series Exodus Found, and we're going to Saudi Arabia to look for evidence for the Midians, a split rock, and Mount Sinai. I don't think you're ever gonna find anything more beautiful than this. The Red Sea, 
at dawn. Here in Nueva, this has been a spectacular experience. Let me just ask you a question. Have you experienced the miracle of salvation? Here in these waters, God saved Israel from sure destruction as the Pharaoh was pursuing them and they were about to be destroyed. But God can save a nation by parting a deep ocean. If he can do that, he can do something more spectacular and more amazing. He can save you. Yeah, you need salvation, so do I. We are being pursued by the serpent, by the devil. But Jesus came to do a death blow to the devil. When he died on the cross, the devil thought he won. But Jesus, the Son of God, died for our sins, and he dealt the devil a death blow. And he rose again the third day, and he offers you and me a gift called eternal life. And if you will just put your trust in him, to believe in him, not your religion, not your works, but in him, the Bible clearly says that you will be saved today, tomorrow, and forever. Let me show you this wonderful illustration. The Bible says that you and me are sinners. Let this be sin, my phone in my left hand representing all of us, and my right hand representing the Lord Jesus Christ. He was perfect, he had no sin. But you know what he did on the cross? He became sin for us. He took our sins on the cross and watch. He says, if you will trust in me, if you'll believe in me, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the gift that God is offering to you. I hope you discover that today. God bless you. This series, Exodus Found, has shown me how powerful our God is. Let me send you this map and chart for free. This will give you all the locations that we filmed in Egypt and Saudi Arabia and a lot of the facts as to why I believe this is the route of the Exodus. If you send in grace a gift of $35 or more, I'll also send you the full video series. If your gift is $250 or more, let me also send you this beautiful limited edition canvas print of the Red Sea Parting. Join In Grace's matching gift challenge. All gifts given this week will be doubled. Call now, 800-78-GRACE, or visit ingrace.tv. Record every single In Grace episode. You will be so blessed as we learn all about God's world and God's Word. In Grace is a viewer-supported ministry. Thank you for your prayers and gifts.